Hey, welcome to Optimize Your Body with Martin Silva, where we talk raw, uncut facts to truly help you optimize your body. Today I'm here with Amy Fox, the IFBB Pro Physique Athlete and fellow friend at Titan Fitness. How are you doing, eh? Friend and colleague. Friend and colleague, yeah. yeah I forgot to mention exactly. that part. Yeah, All no, good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Um, I spoke to you before, so I've actually had a really busy weekend at the Arnold Classic um, or the Arnold Sports Festival 2018, and that was held in Melbourne. Um, and I was totally run off my feet there, like but having the greatest time working. Um, doing a little bit of judging, helping organise the back end of things and just had a great, great experience. So back into things here in Sydney and I'm feeling a bit tired, a bit exhausted from it all. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so you do some judging stuff as well at the... Uh, at the I've just the started, classes. I've just yeah. started. So I did my, find that? It was tough actually, it was really hard. So, so much more goes into it than um, what most people think and what I used to think as well. Uh, there's more to more than what meets the eye, mm. uh, but when you're sitting that close, um, it's amazing at the things that kind of jump out at you when you're judging. So um, hopefully I'll get better. I think it's one of those things that takes practice as well. Um, but you know, we had so many great athletes on the weekend, which made it even harder. Mm, I bet. Yeah. I say it makes cool. it much harder than then because obviously you've got so much uh, talent. Yeah. And then you're trying to critique like the minor details, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why it's a, it's a cutthroat thing, isn't it? Because you've been there yourself. Um, to get to the pro level, basically, like you have, I've done it with the WBFF, but I mean, IFBB, I mean, to get to the pro level doing that is like another ball game altogether. So how have you found it in the past? Like, because obviously from a judge's perspective, now you obviously must be able to see the difference now, see how it feels, obviously, you being a competitor yourself and getting yeah. to the pro level. And you must have, I guess, you didn't win straight away. You must have had a, you must have had a work for that pro status. So, uh, how did you how did you actually find the journey? Uh, I mean, how did you actually manage to how, how many competitions first of all did you do um, until you got to that pro level? I've asked, been asked this question before. How many you competitions? Don't even know. I, I don't even know. Yeah, I that's how hard you had to work for it. Shows that I did, but I did my first show in two thousand and seven, and got my pro card in two thousand and fourteen. Which I think, in the overall uh, perspective of things, that's just actually quite quick. Yeah, that is. Um, so. You know, but a lot of things make it quick as well. So it depends on uh, your work ethic and, and how you take your training, possibly genetics as well, your support network around you. That means friends, family, and just opportunities that are happening. Uh, yeah, how you're traveling financially as well to whether or not you can invest more time uh, in physical therapy and training and food and nutrition and actually spend the money on these things mm. so you can progress faster. So there's a lot of reasons why people achieve things faster than others, um, but I guess at the end of the day it does come down to willpower because sure. even though you might not have much money, you might have a greater willpower and you still achieve the same end result at the end of the day as well. Exactly. So um, there, there might be barriers, but they're not going to say you're not going to achieve something because of this. So exactly. That's and cool. it comes down to how much do you want it, and then yeah. you apply that. You can apply that to anything in life. Um, but obviously, with it must be interesting now being a judge because obviously it's a subjective sport, right? Yeah. So it's pretty much the only sport out there which is essentially as harsh as it sounds. It's based on people's opinions, right? Yeah. So, for example, with uh, with my journey. I think it took me about eight competitions until I actually won one. I started off with IFBB as oh, right. uh, men's physique. So I've done about yeah, five. I love that division. Yeah, I, I know. love that division. It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. And now it's like, it's different. It's a different, I've done it back in, I think it was back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a different ball game now altogether. The guys are much bigger for a start. So it's almost like uh, the bodybuilder kind of, like they're yeah. like classic bodybuilders, aren't they really nowadays? Um, yeah. But yeah, I started off doing that, you know, with the board shorts. Luckily, because at the time I had zero legs anyway, I had legs <laughs> like cotton buds. So He's got legs now. <laughs> i got legs now, you can't see them, but uh, <laughs> I'm not getting them out next to Amy, that's for sure. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, so I, did, I didn't get the results I wanted, and I was just like, you know, you, you probably experienced it yourself, yeah, the first few times, yeah, you just shattered, heartbroken, yeah. Yeah. and you're like, you feel like, oh my God, like, what, what more can I do? You, you know in your head, because you've got to go up there expecting to win, right? Yeah. So when I went up there, I was like, you know, really confident going into it. I had the condition, but I didn't quite get the posing right. Um, yeah. I didn't get the tan right a few but times. But did you know this at the time? Or no. was this something that you 
No. It came to realize afterwards. A a afterwards, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the right. thing. And it's on the day, isn't it, Aim? That's, yeah. what, that's what counts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I was exactly the same. So um, I started, uh, you know, I placed and I did a couple of shows at an amateur level that I did really well at. And then at the next show, I placed third. And then you're kind of like, well, what the hell? Like, no. I placed first last week and then I placed yeah. thir uh, first this week. Like, I don't understand mm -hmm. how this is all working. Um, but when you step back from it and you actually analyse it properly, all of these things, like it, maybe it was your tan that wasn't quite quite right or maybe your posing was a little bit off. Um, maybe you were just positioned on stage and you weren't aware that the head judge was sitting in a particular spot. So you were posing your absolute best angle to the crowd and not the judging table, mm. so, for, so therefore they missed your best pose and that hurt you. Um, it, it's really interesting because... Looking back now, every time I didn't win at the time, I thought it was total bullshit, as mm. everyone does. Like, yeah, oh, that's yeah. crap. Like, judges don't know what they're looking for. You're really for. bitter and angry, isn't Bitter it? and angry, and you go and have a bitch and a moan and whatever. Um, however, looking back now, I'm like, I can absolutely see why I didn't place. Absolutely. So um, I understand when people get frustrated and um, angry and upset when they don't win. However, with this sport, because, like you said, it's not a running race, it's not... Um, the quickest over the line is the first place um, getter. You have to look at absolutely everything. And, and one of the things that I found out is that one thing of the body is not worth more than another thing in terms of point scoring. Mm -hmm. So just because you've got good abs and no legs doesn't mean you're going to win. And just because you've got great legs and a thick waist doesn't mean you're going to lose. Exactly, yeah. So all of these body parts are judged the same. Yeah. But it's it's a combination of weaknesses and a package. combination of yeah. Mm. That's right. And then obviously not to mention you're the you're the, the pro when it comes to posing and stuff like that. You know the posing and how you present yourself on stage. All of these things are so. I mean, it's the combination of everything. It's all the intricate details in there yeah. which make all the difference. But I was exactly the same as you after you know like five times in a row. I came second, like yeah. you said then. I came second, then I made it to the British finals, then I didn't place in the top six. Yeah. And then I just kept getting worse yeah. results, and I was just like, what, the hell's what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't get this. Yeah. Like, I've tried putting everything in. I felt like I was bringing better condition, but I wasn't, like you said, the minor details, and it's the full package, right? So it's proportion and symmetry as a whole, and then presenting yourself the tan. You dry enough, you full enough. There's all these things people don't really realize that until they uh, yeah. actually get out there and learn. Yeah, and I would say, like, one thing that I would recommend people do if they're getting beaten or they're just missing out or they keep placing second over and over again, um, don't take the feedback as personal criticism for mm. a start. Like, obviously, the judges want to see you uh, progressing and doing better and, you know, hopefully becoming pro one day. Mm. Like, that's that's ideally – everyone wants to see everyone, wants to see everyone succeed. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not trying to hold you back mm. by placing you second. Um, it, it's a real indication that – uh, it's not favoritism. It's not they're being hard on you. There is an actual reason as to why you are not placing. Mm. And whether or not some of the judges might not even know it mm. um, at a glance, there's something that makes them go, yeah, it's, it's, it's good, but there's something not quite right. Whereas someone else walks out and it's like, wow, I don't know why this person is a wow, but they're just... Mm. Wow. Yeah, for sure. There's, there's kind of like... They've got a wow factor. Yeah, they've just got a wow factor, and that's what you've got to aim for. So um, the thing that will hold you back the most is if you crack the shits and hold on to, like, that shitty feeling exactly. of not placing. For sure. So I always say to the girls and guys when they're wanting, like, feedback and things, get the top placing pro in that federation, put your photos, your identical pose photos, right up next to them, and look at it. Like, the judges aren't looking for you to um, – they're not comparing you with the next amateur that just won. Mm. They're comparing your body with the pro-level mm. athletes. Yeah, yeah. So you've got your pro-level athlete who's got the perfect package, and then you take you that came second. You've got your body side by side, and then you can actually physically um, see what area is letting you down. You don't need the judges to tell you this. So have a look at it. Are your shoulders as big? As the pro, yes or no? Well, if the answer is no, well, give yourself one point. Exactly. Give yourself one point. Okay, so that's one thing that I've, I've got, got to work on, yeah. shoulders. Have a look again. Is the pro's waist bigger or smaller than my waist? 
yeah, smaller waist. I've got to work on that. You've got another point. Mm. The higher your scores, obviously, yeah. means the lower down you're going to place. Yeah, yeah. Because so the lower score wins. Yeah, that's it. So, but always compare yourself next to the pro. Then have a look at the condition. Is my condition through my back area the same as the pros, yes or no? Mm. Yeah, actually, I think it is the same. Mm. So, zero. Turn to the front. Is my condition the same at the front? Yeah, by condition, just for the listeners, by condition you mean like lean, lean shredded, yeah. you know, am I, am I basically lean enough, essentially? That's, that's am what I lean enough? Is my enough. body fat low enough? Yeah, and, yeah, so and then you can't see all the water as well because that's going to determine how you look in terms of uh, visible, you know, uh, visible striations in the muscles and all that kind of stuff as well. Yes, yeah. correct, correct. Yeah. So, um, and also it depends on the category too. So lean per category can mean different things. So mm. lean in bodybuilding could mean vascularity, striations. Mm. Lean in bikini should mean like it's more of like a toned kind yeah, of look. Yeah, that's what you mean. Like yeah. you shouldn't see vascularity and veins yeah. through the abdominals exactly. of a bikini much. competitor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so it's still meant to keep that. That's the tricky thing, isn't it? They're meant to keep the feminine kind of look, like the beach body look, if you like, mm-hmm. the lean with it. But then there's, there's numerous different judges who some said, so did you find that? I know you don't want to obviously talk too much, but yeah. did you find that people have different opinions and then you kind of, you all come together towards the end and you just kind of, you hash it out and then decide like that, is it, towards the end of the judging criteria, is it? Yeah, and I mean, this is this is human bias. So mm. in the judging panel, there's always going to be an, ev- uh, an uneven number of judges because that element of opinion mm. takes over. So that's why you don't have one person judging the show mm. because me, growing up, I used to love legs. I love the look of legs. Mm. I think, like, if I see someone with great legs... Yeah. I, can't, I tend to push past the fact that they've got muscular legs yeah, yeah, yeah. and they Just might be fat. the legs. Because you know what work goes into building your legs, yeah. up, right? Yeah, so I found, I found <laughs> that my eye was really drawn to someone with legs yeah. over someone with condition. Yeah, exactly, because that's your personal preference. It's my it? personal preference. Yeah, yeah. But the next judge sitting next to me is thinking, who cares if they've got big legs? They're fat. Yeah, of course. So who cares? So their their <laughs> preference, fat. yeah, they're, they're fat, fruity, whatever, spilled over. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. They're fluffy. One way or another, they they bring in the condition. Of yeah. Them. So, but my preference was the shape and the mm. muscularity over the condition. And the next judge, their mm. preference was condition because they know how hard it is to get condition yeah, yeah, exactly. over shape. Yeah. So this is where you'll so get combinations of opinions and really combination the, of well, opinions. Well, obviously, at the same time. It's, it's unmistakable sometimes, isn't it? If someone brings the full package, you know, like you said, the wow factor, it's game over, isn't it? Yeah. But anyway, I was just going to say, in terms of um, you getting to where you have in the bodybuilding world, getting to the pro level, IFBB physique competitor, um, and obviously I've done that with WBFF as well, and what I've what I've learned from it is some like valuable life lessons, and uh, obviously it completely changes the way you are as a person and everything, right? Um, but I've learned to apply the discipline and the mindset required to get to that level, even just to get on stage, right? That's one thing. But to actually get to the pro level, um, you have to be resilient. Um, you have to have a particular kind of mindset, right? You have to, like willpower, you have to work on your willpower all the time, day in, day out, and all the rest of it, right? It just comes down to discipline and, and um, having that, like, go get a mindset, right? But have you managed to apply, like, some of this into your day-to-day life in terms of, like, business and just... In general, and just uh, in, in terms of you having, you know, a strong, a strong character essentially, and, and having discipline, and determination, have you managed to apply that into other aspects of your life? Yeah, I think so. I think just being on stage, being judged by your physical appearance, mm. has actually given me a lot of um, confidence, believe it or not. Mm. So, I feel like the outside of your body is just a shell. It doesn't change the person you are inside. And when I was prepping for a show, even going down to the shopping centre or lining up in a line, I would be treated very, very differently when I was muscular and shredded. Mm. <laughs> or I was never super shredded, but you know what I mean for a girl. Like, I don't know. You were pretty shredded. <laughs> you were pretty shredded. <laughs> <laughs> but But um, I was treated differently. And um, then when you're not as uh, muscular uh, and not as lean, it sounds weird, but um, like, for example, when I was looking like that, like just before my show, I would be lining up in a line and people would notice me and, and let me line up. Whereas now I could be standing in a line and someone would just to, like walk straight in front and, and jump the queue. Mm. And I'm like, I was just standing here. So you just get noticed in different ways. Yeah, and yeah. Not, all, not always for the better yeah, of course. as well, being a more muscular female. Yeah. Um, but the way you're treated is different. And it just made me think, 
that's interesting. Like uh, I know people uh, are always taught from a young age, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, but mm. it's human nature. That's mm. what happens. Absolutely. And um, in terms of opportunities in, uh, within the fitness industry as well, if you're not looking a certain way, um, they're very quick to get rid of you. Yeah, for sure. So it just made me think, it gave me confidence because I thought, okay, so I can't rely on something fickle like the external visual appearance Shallow, to yeah. be successful and mm-hmm. do a good job at right. my work. So I know I'm a good worker. I know that um, I have people's best in- interests at heart. So if I can get that message across, then I'm yeah. going to be successful regardless of if I'm uh, muscular and shredded or just how I look now. Yeah, I can tell totally you um, relate to that. Yeah. yeah, so, and I can walk down the street whether I'm looking like that or looking like this or five kilos overweight mm. and still feel good. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I feel like when you've got the formula to know how to get into really good shape, it's actually very empowering. Mm. So when you know exactly like, okay, I'm got, I've got a wedding in six weeks. I know that if I do this, this, and this, I'm going to look this way. And that's empowering. Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. I think you know you can make a few changes, a few tweaks. You know your body. You learn, you essentially. You do the same thing. Yeah, that's right. Even for a photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Someone says, hey, Martin, can, I, can you get your food mm. photo shoot in three weeks? And you're like, oh, right now, give me four. Yeah, yeah, I can dial it in really fast. Yeah, that's yeah. It. Or, yeah, actually, you know what? I can be ready in two. Because yeah, yeah, you know exactly. your body like that. And that's it's right. great. Like, it's a good feeling. And um, I think that's what causes a lot of panic and a lot of stress with a lot of people that want fat loss is because that – they never really know how long it's going to take to look a certain way, mm. um, and that can be stressful. Definitely, yeah. I wanted to talk a bit more about like the the dark side of uh, bodybuilding, right? Because <laughs> because um, as we there's know, lots of dark sides. there's lots of dark sides. <laughs> but I wanted to talk a bit more in terms of um, you know health, right? Yeah. Because um, a lot of people look up to you know like people with lots of big following on Instagram. They go to the pro level or yeah. whatever, um, and they're fitness models. You know, they look like they look shredded all the time in their photos. Like with myself and, and you, I mean, we're pretty lean all year round, right? So we're, we're in a, we're a pretty good state of health all year round, right, generally. But I find a lot of people, uh, they're, they're not, and they, and they battle in terms of um, maintaining a physique and just all round health all year round. So it, it gives off kind of the wrong impression sometimes when people go onto their, they follow certain fitness models or competitors and they'll look at their, uh, their photos and stuff and they're like shredded, shredded, and they're like, they're not, they don't really look like that and they're yeah. not necessarily healthy on the inside. Yeah. So, um, yeah, have you, I mean, what, what have you noticed in terms of like um, people compromising, you know, certain things uh, in terms of their health, whether it be like just their mental well being, emotional, because something's got to give, right? When you go yeah. in at that level, yeah. like, I mean, you must yeah. have witnessed some of that and yeah. it's quite alarming really because a lot of people don't realize that some, some of these, you know, bodybuilders are not, they're not healthy, they're not happy, you know? So, um, whereas it gives off. On you know on social media it gives off that perfect image, didn't it? You know what I mean. So I just wanted yeah. to see if you could give me more about that. Um, so one thing that I really notice for myself when whenever I'm prepping, and this is just pretty much in general as well. Like I find I go off the rails with discipline and consistency and healthy eating and even training if I'm tired. Mm. And not I'm not saying like tired from a training session. I'm like if I don't make sleep. A priority, mm-hmm. go to bed at a good hour, get, you know, for me, I feel the best when I've had eight hours sleep. Some people can operate on less, mm-hmm. but when you don't make quality sleep a priority. So important in that. I've done a whole episode with this. Yeah, so I just important. feel like that for me is probably the key to, to success and key Same. to being consistent with training, key to actually feeling happy, and the key to stick, sticking to a diet. Mm-hmm. I actually found that. Um, when I was lacking in sleep, I would get to a point because the brain is fatigued where I would crave sugar. Mm-hmm. And like, I like sugar, mm-hmm. of course, like so does everyone, but I'm quite happily, I will quite happily say no mm-hmm. to something sweet. Mm-hmm. But if I had spent a whole week where I was just jamming in heaps of training, uh, heaps of clients, um, going to bed late, like watching a series before bed, all this stuff, being overstimulated and, and not rested well enough, um, I would start to have uncontrollable binges. Mm-hmm. That's it, and it's funny because I've been listening to a podcast today actually, and they've done some interesting studies. And what they've uh, proven is even one night's bad sleep, right? So say, for example, you get the way they kind of determine that roughly is like under six hours, right? Yeah. But everyone's different. So, say, for example, you get a rough night's sleep, even one night's sleep can make you um, less insulin sensitive the next day. Yeah. And it puts the other hormones out of whack. Like, obviously, leptin, which yeah. uh, leptin, as you know, is the uh, satiety hormone, it tells you when you're full. So what happens is, and it's derived from fat, so 
that hormone leptin is is not firing as well, and ghrelin, the one that makes you hungry, is actually goes uh, crazy. Yeah, it goes crazy. So they're, they're all out of whack, yeah. and um, it's like, for example, you know, people just kind of adapt. Like the human body will adapt to anything, right? But when you adapt to not having enough sleep, right? And people can get used to that, and it's yeah. you know, it's it's widespread well, now. Well, they start to tolerate it as tolerate normal. It. Yeah, they, not... they think it's normal. Yeah, yeah exactly. And um, it's just like analogy is like, for example, if you're withdrawing money from the bank, right? And you keep withdrawing money, eventually you end up overdrawing, right? Yep. And then that's when you go into the red zone and you can get into a trouble, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing where people are like training hard, balls to wall, um, you know, they're not sleeping enough. Somebody's got to give at some point, in there, and then you're you, end, you end up tired, you've got a mentally deposit. tired, like physically tired, everything. Yeah. And then you, yeah. Totally that's really when you start to run off the white rails. So, for so me, you know, say so yourself, that's really interesting. I get the same yeah. as well, like the next day I feel more craving. Yeah. So. And if I, like, I just try and fix myself, and I don't really get guilty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is my that's own good. Powerful, but that's a good thing, though. That, that's, if yeah, I'm, I'm craving that, and yeah. I go out and I eat things that I shouldn't eat, I think to myself, what have I been doing this week? Because why am I craving? Mm. Oh, that's right. I've had box. zero sleep and mm. I've been totally stressed out. Mm. Well, that makes sense. So that removes the guilt. Mm. So what do I need to do to stop the binge eating? I need to go to bed early tonight. Mm. And not just go to bed, but have quality sleep. So I'll make sure that I have uh, just a little bit of magnesium before bed. I turn on, I've got like an oil diffuser yeah. with essential oils. It might sound stupid for some people, but yeah. I do little things like this. And no electrical activity as well. You don't want your phone and stuff like that. Do you find I that helps? I still do. Yeah, you still do. I but still do. But I if I was, yeah, I try yeah. and be mindful yeah, cool. of it. So like just gradually making the room mm. darker yeah. um, and preparing yourself for sleep, mm -hmm. not just be like on the computer going exactly. crazy and then, okay, 10 o'clock, got to go to bed. That's exactly it's right. It's like wind down over the space of a couple of hours. That's it. Cool. And then go to sleep. Awesome. Yeah, so I do think like have, um, it's almost like a little schedule or a little routine. Yeah, you that's do it. You have a bit of structure. Prepare yourself for a good night's sleep. Yeah, definitely. Have a hot bath or hot shower or whatever. Yeah. Um, Epsom salt bath, sit yeah. there, chill out for 10 minutes, like actually prepare for a good down. sleep. Yeah, exactly. You've got to like prepare to wind down because it's, it's, it's like an art this day and age, and they're just learning how to relax because we're just yeah. we're in the most stressed state we've ever been. Right, so we've got the smartphone where you know you literally you can do anything. In the palm of your hand, you've got this computer yeah. which can control your whole life, right? If you're not yeah, careful, yeah. so you can do everything from there. Got all this stimulation coming from all different angles, and it's like you need to learn how to wind down. Then it's, it's it's such a tough thing to do, though, isn't it? Like obviously, you always um, always got emails to check and all that. Yeah, practice it. It's like. It takes yeah. some time, doesn't it? it, it it's like with um, everything else. So if you want to get better at or get stronger, you practice being strong mm. with your weights. If you want to um, get, you know, increase your fitness, then you practice your cardiovascular mm. fitness. Exactly, yeah. Uh, by going for a jog at first sure. and then adding in some sprints. Yeah. Same thing with your sleep. So if you want a better, um, you know, your sleep health or uh, what would you call it? What uh, would yeah. you say? Well, we just say overall health and it really is yeah. it's, what, it's the most important thing let's face it food, water all that kind of stuff as you know we can go without sleep they've done studies in like three weeks I was on rats for like three weeks like and they died the rats well, I, know, <laughs> I, know, I know it's animals and stuff yeah but we, whatever it gives you a rough idea doesn't it right so why don't you go three weeks without sleep I mean even go in like a few days I mean you you know yourself one nice bad sleep and you're already connecting the dots to that aren't you so yeah Really show how important it is. But yeah, I was going to move on to um, asking you more about delving a bit deeper into like binge eating because mm -hmm. um, the last episode I done was really interesting. I had like a nutritionist on, and uh, she dealt with uh, literally from the age of ten to about twenty, really unhealthy uh, relationship with food and stuff. And I, I had it as well. I mean, and I still do battle with it every now and then. But I've got to a place now, luckily, where very rarely do I crave crap food. So. Even if I want something, um, I want to have some sugar or I want to have something more calories, right? It's normally involved nutrients now. For example, like it's weird. Like I'll have like full fat coconut yogurt, like dates, dark chocolate, almond butter. So I'll have like 2,000 calories in a bowl, but it's it's obviously there's some nutrients, nutrients in it. Exactly. It's not like generally like even having like pizzas and burgers, which would be like a weekly thing for me before. Now I just don't, I know how bad I feel afterwards, not just mentally, but like physically. Um, so it, getting to that level takes a while, but I know, I know you've, uh, you've come a long way as well because uh, when you first start competing, how much did you find that battle with the restrictive eating for shows? Did you find it was harder at the start? Um, yeah. I mean, it's always been tough mm. because, um, I just like eat, yeah. I just like eating when I want to eat, and mm. if I'm not that hungry, I'm happy to skip a meal and then eat more later, which you can't do if you're prepping, no. um, or if you want to be like top level bodybuilding mm. or top level level competitor, that kind of thing's not on. So exactly. that takes practice. 
Um, but in terms of, uh, I mean, I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, this is just my own personal yeah. experience, but um, again, if I've got my sleep under control and I'm still having issues where I'm craving things that uh, are going to undo my hard work, I always have the mentality of nutrient dense. So how can I get the most nutrients into my next meal to calm my body down because perhaps I'm craving because I need vitamin whatever. Yeah, yeah, And you, for sure. you're just unaware of it. So um, first thing I'll do is I'll, I, I love my salad and I go and make the biggest bowl of salad with everything in it, heaps of colour, heaps of green um, and a little bit of protein, not heaps, mm-hmm. a little bit of fats um, and a little bit of carbs from not – like starchy carbs, but mm. more so vegetable carbs. Yeah, yeah, so plant-based carbs. Yeah, and I find that that actually helps for me. And whether or not it's a visual, it's a, um, a placebo because you can see a big bowl and it's lots of colour and visually mm. it's nice to look at mm. um, instead of just broccoli and chicken, mm. like two colours, like boring. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me that really helps and so. it's always worked. So if I chuck in loads of nutrients and I eat as much as I want, like I don't put a cap on it, you're not going to get fat from lots of salad. Mm. Um, I, I find that I don't even need to put um, sauces or anything on it as long as I've got some kimchi or some sauerkraut that gives it that wet kind of taste. Mm. That That's works it. for and me. The probiotics on the gut then as well, isn't it? Yeah, it just helps get everything back in check so, it's back in check so I, I'm not um, going crazy. That's it. It's the flavour as well that was in there because, like, um, for example, a woman last week, actually, she called it sad salad. You know when people, like, then they'll make they'll make an effort to eat healthy but they're not, not very creative and it's just like a bland, boring salad with no yeah, flavour. That's, yeah. that's crap, man. You've got to add the flavour of it. You've got to make it um, palatable, right? Yeah. So that's what it's all about in there. But um, going on to uh, like meal frequency and stuff like that and like how you manage to uh, maintain your you know your physique and, and all-round wellness off the stage, right? So um, basically over the last few years, I've started eating less frequently so I actually, I'll eat about, I won't eat more than like four times in a day. Yeah. And I also implement um, intermittent fasting as well. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, okay, that's, cool. that's just every day. And that's because it's... You felt good on that? I feel great on that, yeah. yeah. It's, more, it's more convenient as well because it means I don't have to prep, I don't have to worry about getting up and having breakfast like, you know, 4 a.m. or something stupid like that. So in the, generally, I'll just like fast in the mornings. So I'll break my fast like late morning or early afternoon. Yeah. So it's normally like on average about 16, sometimes I'll say about average about 16 hours a day in the 24-hour period. Not every day, though, maybe like four or five times a week um, on the weekends, and I'll probably just um, eat more frequently. But um, it's worked wonders for me. I feel much better. And also the, the studies are now saying that actually if you eat if you eat more than like every four hours or more than four times a day, it's really not good for health and longevity and for you know, circadian rhythm, all that kind of stuff. So um, how, do you, like, how do you structure your... Like, because I know you've always got your meals prepped and stuff. I think you've got a company you sponsor as well. Yeah, yeah, food for yeah. fitness. Food for fitness. There we are. Yeah, food for fitness. Yeah. So, um, how many? I mean, do you stick to a certain amount of meals, or do you just go by based, you know, what your body needs? Well, actually, it, it's funny that you said about the um, like health and longevity. So, yeah. there's two different things. There's the health and longevity side of things, and there's being a good bodybuilder. Yes. Two very Maybe. different things. So, yeah, good point. Um, for now, I'm all for the health and longevity stuff, which is kind of what you're doing. Like, mm-hmm. I, I eat less. Um, I, I just eat less. Yeah. All Same. in all. So probably about three three, three times a day. Yeah, three times a day. Yeah, cool. but when I'm prepping, go. I've got up to 10 meals a day. There we are. That's good to hear from someone who knows this stuff because um, what a lot of people who compete don't seem to do is go back to like right okay let not need to focus on health it's like it's the only way they know it was the same as me you probably started off this way as well at the start it was like all i knew to stay in shape this is the battle that i face with uh, like binge eating disorder it went on properly hard for about a year or two years <laughs> so like where i would what did like you binge on? What oh, you everything like you name it it would be like dominoes ben and jerry's can you name it whatever i could get my hands on which was dirty stinking <laughs> food I would get my hands on it. And it's funny because before I started prepping, I never really craved any of that crap. But then after doing my yes. first show, I turned into a junk food monster. Exactly. And yeah. that's why it's, it's restrictive it's eating. It's, it's, it's not yeah. good. It's not healthy. Um, it's not sustainable to be restrictive with your food pattern, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I used to, like, for about a year or maybe a year and a half, it would be like Monday to Thursday, it would be like restrictive eating. So I'm eating, at the time I thought it was healthy, but it really wasn't. It was like the same sort of foods, right? You know, like all we know from bodybuilding, chicken yeah. and broccoli, sweet potatoes, yeah. salmon. It's like right? not drinking and then binging on the weekend. That's exactly Not it. drinking and then binging on the weekend. Exactly, it's the same thing. It's not healthy. So, um, yeah, so I, I used to then, Friday, Saturday, Sunday used to be like an all-out binge. And then that went on for like, um, like I said, for about a year. 
18 months. But now, like I said, I'm at a point now, it's taken me a while to get there, but just from being in tune with my body and just focusing on health, like you said, right? So, um, yeah, it's interesting. So what I was getting at with that is um, a lot of people, they still go and have their six meals a day yep. or eight meals a day um, all year round. You know, people who've competed because that's all they know. You know, this is what works for my body in terms of looking good. Yep. But until you make health a priority, right? If you're focusing on the physique, I don't know if you've been there before, but with me, I was always yep. tuned into physique, 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 health second, even when I was off stage. So yep. like, and then I managed to switch it now. So that's changed the game for me. First. Yeah. Do you find that's the game changer, putting it a priority when you're off stage, or is it just having balance? Like, um, that's the key thing, and you've got to enjoy yourself. Really, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think it depends on the person. So yeah. I think that um, some people actually want to be top level pros. So everything comes at a cost. Everything. So if you want to be a top level pro, you're going to have to sacrifice. It might be friends, it might be family, and this is even in the off season. It might be going out for dinner. Uh, it might be, you know, having late nights or it might be uh, the food, mm -hmm. like, like you're talking about, yeah. having less food. So if you're wanting to be a top-level pro and that is your be-all and end-all and that is what is ultimately going to make you happy, then the six meals in the off-season is what you have to do. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, that could possibly um, come at a cost to your overall health and well-being. Mm, yeah, for sure. But your goal is this, and that's what's going to make you happy. So for me, I try to tell people what to do is as such. I try to say, well, what actually makes you happy? Because if I told someone that wants their pro card so badly and wants to be the top-level pro to say, hey, you know, I want you to have three months off and I just want you to eat three meals a day, they're like, but that doesn't make me happy because mm. I want this goal. Yeah, yeah, so sure. then it has the opposite effect. Mm. So I think happiness comes first, prioritise your goal, mm. and then be realistic and honest with yourself about what cost that's going to come to, mm. like come come at. Exactly. So yes, you can do it, but it's going to come at a cost. Definitely. And yes, I can eat healthy and have three meals a day and eat less for longevity, but the cost is yeah. my muscle and looking like a bodybuilder. For sure, yeah, exactly. So you can't so. do both. So as long as you understand that you can't do both, it take, again, it takes the pressure off, but you need to do what makes you happy. Absolutely, I agree with that. And coming to happiness and actually climbing the mountain and getting to the top of the mountain, for example, like uh, Ben Bukulski, remember we talked about him earlier, um, I'm a massive fan, he's a mate of yours, right? He's, he's a prime example, he said, you know, he, he, he done everything he could, he was the biggest man on the planet, he got to the top level, um, so he, he got to, obviously he got to Mr. Olympia, yeah. and he got to like, pretty much... He, play, he was always placing like inside yeah. the top 10. Exactly, and he was yeah. like the, basically like the biggest human on earth, one of the biggest, yeah, heaviest, yeah. conditioned... The best free. legs on stage. Best legs on stage, yeah. just absolute animal. But he said, like, you know, he got to the top of the mountain and he just wasn't happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you were saying then, if it's, if it's going to make you happy, you know, your goal is, right, I want to get to pro level or whatever it is. Um, do you think, I've found that addressing the why with people, like, why, why do you want to do it, right? Is there any particular deep-seated reasons? Is it insecurities? Because a lot of it does stem down to that, doesn't it? Insecurities or yeah, something that happened true. in childhood or whatever. Yeah. Do you think that's really important to address, like, why am I doing this? Like, because it's a lot to sacrifice. You can, you can, if you can literally right. potentially compromise your health to get yeah. there, it's a big sacrifice. Yeah, it? and I was talking to, uh, well, I was listening to Candace King. She's the top-level Olympia figure pro for IFBB. Mm -hmm. And um, she said on stage on the weekend, uh, Tony Doherty asked her, how many times a day do you train or how many hours a day do you train? And she said, oh, five, five and a half. But, but that's by choice. That makes her happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Imagine training five and a half hours, like I've done it a little bit, oh but I'm telling you right now, when I was doing the five and a half training um, hours of training a day, I wasn't bloody happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was hating it, That's it. but I was doing it because sure. I was trying to achieve a goal, but it wasn't sustainable for me because it didn't make me happy. Mm. It's sustainable for her because doing that actually makes her happy. Mm. Um, That's it. I mean, again, it's just it's, uh, the yeah, it's, it's individual. You can stick to something pretty uncomfortable yeah. if it makes you happy. That's it. And so for me, like... I like all about that, isn't it? Yeah, and the yeah. thing that makes me happy at the moment is actually the posing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really like routine choreography. I love working with bodybuilders and bikini athletes and uh, physique competitors, all of that. So mm -hmm. um, I work seven days a week, any time of day, night, morning, whatever. Why? Like, it doesn't tie me out because mm -hmm. I actually am happy when I'm doing it. Yeah, for sure. That's PT, on the other hand... 
not so happy, so I minimise the time that I spend PTing, so I do like it. Yeah, I see. So for me, any more than six hours a week PT, and I'm not happy anymore. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. I love the posing. I could do that full time, mm. but PT, I had to cut back a little bit. Yeah. So it's all about just identifying what actually, and being honest with yourself, what makes you happy, mm. um, and sticking to sticking to that. That's it, sticking to that, trusting yeah. the process, isn't it? Um, no, I was just going to ask you as well about, um, obviously, Justin. So, yeah. you know, are you, are you, are you married? No. Yeah, okay, so your boyfriend. I was going to say husband, yeah. but I won't say that. Yeah. It sounds weird. I'm going to put him on the spot now, but he's listening to this. Boyfriend, partner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so your boyfriend, Justin, undefeated, bodybuilder, pro, he's pro IA. No, what you know, federation is he again? He's for NABBA, so actually, um, he, he's only done one IFBB show, and that was back in 2010, and it was kind of in alignment with um, another NABBA show. So but he's always done NABBA. Hmm. So he's just recently, well, actually, it would have been in October last year, won his Mr. Universe That's title right. for NABBA, and that was in Birmingham in um, the UK. Mm. And that mm. was the, like, the pinnacle of his career as well. Yeah. Like, that's what he's been going for wow. since, you know, 25 years ago. Yeah. That was his aim. So wow. he's finally awesome, got that man. title. Um, and, yeah. Awesome. And the way he preps and the way I prep have been very different. Mm. Uh, that's what I was going to get to. Um, how do you, or something along those lines... How do you manage to like uh, balance it? Because obviously you both put your heart and soul into getting where you've got in the bodybuilding world and whatnot. How, how do we you, not kill each other? How do, how do you not kill each other? How have you not yeah. killed each other yet? Um, yeah. I know I know it helps when obviously you're both in the same game. Sometimes and, it helps and sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't it? Sometimes, yeah. But yeah, I think um, I think we're both lucky. Mm. I don't think that um, it's not really normal that two people that compete can come together and actually make it work. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's a really funny sport like mm. that. Um, but I think we're the exception to the rule where it has been quite comfortable. We're not saying it's 100% easy because there's always times that are going to be tough. But generally, it has helped in our situation because I've understood what it feels like to be depleted and to come home and actually not want to hold a conversation because you're just tired. Mm. It's not because you don't want to talk to the other person. It's just that you're physically... Um, it physically so drained because you put everything into training mm. for hours and hours on end in the day that your calories are low, like almost like too low to sustain anything more outside of that training session. And a little conversation takes a lot of no, oh, definitely, yeah, it's taxing. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So Justin and I pretty much don't really talk much and have a good conversation uh, for about five weeks out of his show, mm. but. I don't crack shits at him. I just understand that. So when he comes home from work, I'm like, "Hey, how was your day?" Yeah. Yeah, good. That's that's, that's as good. good as the sentence is gonna like. That's, that's as it. good as the answer. Not good. This happened. That happened. Just yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, you, great. Because you can both relate. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, what you're yeah. feeling. Isn't it? That's the most yeah. important thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah okay. That's that's uh, interesting. So um, I was going to ask you about uh, also your view on sun, your thoughts on supplements because yeah. um, ever since I stopped taking them, to be honest, like, yeah. again it was about two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago. The only supplement I do take now is creatine. Uh -huh. um, that's the only one really that has scientific evidence, scientific evidence to prove it works really anyway. But obviously um, they have their place to, in, to a certain extent, but I find more of them are just like, they're so processed, artificial sweeteners and all the rest of it nowadays. Um, and I just, the, the, how I felt and people I've known, when they cut the supplements out and they just focus more on whole foods, they feel better. Um, and yeah. you know, Generally, I just I'm just not a big fan, so I always talk shit about most supplements, to be honest. But I'm not going to go that far into it. But um, what what are, what are your thoughts on supplements? <laughs> Put you on the spot now. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this: I, I understand what you're saying, and yeah. this is why I only use Gentech supplements. <laughs> I'm sponsored by Gentech as well, but I wouldn't be sponsored by a company company if I didn't believe in it. Oh, of course. And yeah. the guy that um, owns this company, he's mm. been a bodybuilder and a very successful one. His name's Nick Jones, and he designed or started to put in place his own supplement brand, not just because he wanted to make money, none of that, but he wanted supplements that he would actually use himself. He didn't want to put shit into his body. Mm -hmm. um, he, want, he wanted the highest, highest quality of anything going, mm -hmm. um, and he just found that there was a real gap in the market and there wasn't really anything that he was willing to use. Yeah, yeah, I see. Um, so I... Um, do you know what sweeteners you use in there? Do you use like you don't know what sweeteners? Because like you know the artificial sweeteners and all the studies coming out. Yeah, he's got some it. products like that, but he also Stevia. does. Uh, yeah, like but he also like some of the products because to be honest, like EAs and BCAAs, they taste yeah. crap, right? Yeah, yeah. Like exactly. in their pure form, they taste rubbish. That's right. 
So Nick has got some with the artificial sweetness yep. so that people will want to buy yeah, it. Yeah, of course, yeah. However, because his target market is athletes, yeah. like high-level athletes, most of his other supplements are just in the pure form. They taste revolting, but you know what? Yeah. If you're um, like yourself... It's the best way to do it, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so he's got the option there, which Perfect. I actually like too because I know that his products are the best. However, if I've got some of my clients that are brand new to the gym, uh, they're just getting into it, they're used to binge eating and all this sort of thing, and they just need something uh, to get them going that's a little bit healthier than what they were doing before, then he's got products that I can implement into their sessions. Mm, awesome. Yeah, so yeah, you know, amino acids that. and things like that um, cool. with a little bit of flavor that you know don't make you want to throw up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you educate them so that they can eventually move on to the, the hardcore stuff. Exactly, that's it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. pure stuff. I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah g- g- going on to, um, yeah, on, on that note, obviously we said about like health and the dark side and stuff like that, yeah. Um, how do you find, because like, obviously to get on the stage at that level, you know, you're going to have to take the other supplements as well, right? Which is, you know, it's, it's, it's well known. Like, I mean, I, don't, I never look down on anyone, nothing like that. I mean, it, does, it makes it nothing, it's nothing like that. I've never, I've never taken it myself. Obviously, um, I haven't really needed to. I've comp- I got to the pro level um, naturally, placed top ten in the world. Maybe, I, maybe I could have got a bit, a bit higher if I did. But there we are. Like, I was happy with that. Yeah, but yeah. who knows? But I was happy just to get up yeah. there. Um, and yeah, like obviously, people are abusing it, like anything in life, yeah. right? So like, I've known yeah. people who do it, and they do it, and they're perfectly fine. They get um, they get regular tests. Um, their hormones are all in check, you know, and all the rest of it, and they feel okay, and they cycle it and whatnot. But there's people who are coming in uneducated, like it's almost like an epidemic now in America, yeah. where there's like guys, for example, in their early twenties, can't true. even get a, an erection anymore. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, there's this um, a guy I know who coaches like the screwed up people basically in America, like men's physique guys, and you know how big the men's physique guys are out there. So they're taking like all year rounds, they're taking Rubbish. stuff, yeah, but nonstop, not having a break. And then lo and behold, then obviously the test, natural testosterone levels are just like diminished. Yeah. So, um, have you experienced like have you seen people screw themselves up and whatnot? Or? Um, yeah, I have, and it's it's a really hard one because again, like I don't, I, I'm not qualified to prescribe anything yeah, or of course. particularly give advice. But um, all I can say is like there's all these federations that people say, oh, don't do that federation because everyone's going to be on gear. But <laughs> most of well, actually. At the moment, 100% of my clients are 100% natural and they're doing federations that are so-called unnatural federations. Mm. So, and they're placing. Mm. There we go. Yeah, and I I think that um, uh, the frustrating thing that I have is that people think that you can't compete against people on on drugs. Mm. That's exactly Um, it. They put it at the top, don't they, as if like the the, the, the pro-training programming and the nutrition and all the other stuff is not that important. Yeah. Like, that is not at the top, is it, really? Yeah. Like, I mean, it depends, like, you know. To be beaten if you look by at this someone, Olympia level, I mean, this, it's like different. They're genetic and all of these They've anyway. got genetics. The, the guys in the top, like, work rate, top. Work rate like no other. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so they've got everything else 100%, and then, and then they add that. Exactly, <laughs> that's it. It's, yeah, so, but I, I would just say that um, it depends on your headspace and it depends on your confidence as well. So... For me, I try and educate my clients, okay, you might be up against this person that's using this, this, and this. However, you're great with your diet, you're, um, you're extremely um, tough in the gym, like you don't give up, you push heavy weights, mm-hmm. uh, like you've got all of this stuff in check, and I try and remind them of that so that they, their confidence is elevated. And they, instead of being intimidated by going up against people that are using, instead they're like, I'm going to show them, I'm going to mm-hmm. beat them. Yeah, yeah. I can actually do this naturally and I can... That's it, they, they, take, yeah, they yeah. acquire the, the mindset that's necessary, isn't it? Yes, and um, from what I've seen, most of the people that are implementing it really early actually are doing that because of no other reason other than um, uh, like self-confidence. Mm-hmm. So if they're relying on that to give them confidence, they're going to lose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they're beatable. They're that's beatable. it. And that, that's a very good point because it's, it's a slippery slope like in general, right? Because... Um, you know, I mean, worldwide now, like steroids are rife, right? Worldwide, yeah. really. Um, but when you attach, like, even just in general, for example, I'll get, um, not, not talking about the uh, supplements now, but if I get a client, a uh, new client come in, occasionally it'll happen. Actually, I mean, for the most part, people want to look good, right? Primarily before anything else. And what I find is um, they think, right, if I, get, if I get this physique, I'm going to be happy, right? Because I've experienced it before. Um, if I get to that, if I get to that point, I'm going to 
going to be happy. If I get there, I'm going to be happy once I've got this physique. But um, the body image issues, unless you address, like I said, unless you address it why you want to get there uh, and the reason, the underlying reasons behind it, which, like I said, is normally insecurities, 110%, that physique is not going to make you happier, guaranteed. Yeah. Um, it might make you, it might give you more confidence, like you said, and make you a bit more, maybe a tiny yeah. bit happier just from getting, yeah, outgo. And if you want to do it for a photo shoot or you want to get on stage, you know, it might benefit you. But all in all, the physique alone is not going to make you happy, right? Yeah. So um, where I was going with that is like, it's basically realizing that the happiness comes from within, right? So just people attaching, like I used to, this is what I didn't see. I've, I've always been in shape, but when I got to that level of competing, I was always like, right, I want to I want to maintain the physique. Like I said, when I was restrictive eating and I binge eating, trying so hard to keep the physique all year round and it just wasn't happening. It was the yeah. biggest battle ever. But now, ever since I've got to a point where I'm not even thinking about it, it's secondary. So now I focus on like how I feel, like you say, getting enough sleep, all these, all these um, uh, simple things which make a massive difference. Sleeping enough, you know, drinking enough water, eating the right food, say 80% of the time. He stretches stretching. I stretch a lot. I do a lot yeah. of stretching. I love the stretching. <laughs> yeah, so um, how do you manage to like maintain it all year round? Because obviously I was going to ask you to see if you could give listeners some tips on basically just, just getting in shape and maintaining it. And then um, how you address the psychological side of it because you've been at, at that top level with the physique, which is like razor sharp, like virtually no body fat. Um, how do you, how do you, the first question is the psychological side. Um, how do you manage it like off stage? You see what I mean? Like just staying healthy and keeping a good physique but not being shredded. You see what I mean? Because yeah. people struggle with that, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of people struggle um, with that. So for me, again, it always goes back to happiness for me. And I've, I've um, identified the things that make me the happiest is actually progress. And it's progress in anything. Mm. So if I'm progressing really well with work, I actually feel happy, mm-hmm. regardless if I'm training or not. And I've gone, like I won my pro card, and then I did almost two years after that of not training at all. And everyone said, how can you do that? And I'm like, because I was actually happy working. Like the working that I was doing, I was making such good progress and making good money that I actually drew a lot of happiness from that. Mm-hmm. And in actual fact, I looked healthy mm-hmm. because I was happy, yeah, not necessarily exactly. because I was training or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I know it doesn't really help everyone in terms of how do you stay lean and whatever, but for me, um, I can not get the guilt with not training the house down mm-hmm. if I am happy. Yes. And I have to be, the only way I can be happy is if I'm progressing in yeah, something. Same. So either progressing in relationships mm-hmm. where um, like my friends and, and I are getting along really well and we're spending good quality time together, we're having really good conversation, um, that makes me happy. So if I'm progressing there, I actually identify that, hey, this week I didn't train, however, I did this great thing and this great thing with this person, and it actually feels awesome. Mm, it does. Um, and that, that helps me stay healthy and it's for my well-being. Or this week I didn't train at all, but I did this with work and this with work and this with work, and I progressed with work, and that's awesome. Mm. That's awesome as well. So that makes me happy. And all of these things contribute to your overall health and well-being. Definitely. 100%. I feel. That's it. So, I agree with that as well, yeah. And like... It doesn't matter, relationships are so important, aren't they? Because that's just a prime example, but like, it doesn't matter like what you accumulate uh, in your life, you know, what materials you have at the end of it or whatever, when it comes to money and finance, whatever. You're gonna be remembered for the relationships you have with people, right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's face it, that's, that's really important, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that, because um, yeah, it's very, very important. Well, that's one thing that um, obviously suffers when you're pregnant. Yeah, yeah, uh, for because sure. Because you can't, you can't socialize, not no. like you want to. You can't have those proper connections with people because you're mentally and physically, you know, mm. completely exhausted from your training sessions and you just don't have that connection. So for the time you're prepping, all of that sort of stuff suffers. So you might be happy because you're looking a certain way, but that's one element. And when you're not training, you can be happy in other areas by focusing on that. But just identify it. Let, let yourself actually see outside the box. Mm. Like it's not all about the way you look. Mm. Um, however, if the way you look is the be all and end all that makes you happy, then yes, yeah. Do that. My grandfather, who has passed away, um, he had an obsession with cars. Yeah. So the only thing on the planet that would make him happy was cars. So unless he was doing that, he wasn't happy. Mm. So some people need, need to, to focus. Yeah, yeah and definitely. they need to have laser focus on one thing. Mm. It's but purpose, for me, isn't it? It's my purpose is a variety of things, mm. and perhaps that's why I haven't competed again. Mm. 
because I did that, I felt like I ticked that. That did make me happy, mm. but now the work side of things is making me really happy too. Great. And that's, that's what I find as well. It's like you got to have purpose in life. That's the most important thing because you can relate this to fitness or whatever your journey is in life. I find people get so caught up on the end goal. So you can, you can say that the physique as well. You know, you get so, so caught up on the end goal and wanting to get from A to B, right? They forget about the process. And that's all we have, right? The here and now is all we have. So enjoying the process, I think, is key, right? And, yeah. and purpose is what, what drives us forward. So people don't realize that they actually, like, like your granddad, for example, with the, uh, with the cars, it's like that was his purpose in life. It that's where his, his life is, enjoyment, his um, hobby, if you like, you know? So, um, yeah, so just to wrap it up then, um, just just one, one thing you'd like to tell uh, the listeners, like you just said then, you'd like to make progress in life. So are there any uh, tips you have in terms of making progress, growing, you know, for example, like learning and gratitude and being grateful for things, I find that helpful myself. Um, is there any, anything that you implement yourself, like any uh, routines or habits that you implement or anything that helps you make progress in particular? I, I don't try and dwell on the fact that something doesn't work. So, um, like, I've tried lots of things and they've failed and I've experienced a lot of failures um, and I try really hard not to focus on the failure as a bad thing. Mm. Oh, there we go. That's great. <laughs> that's, uh, that's simple. Ah, that's yeah. great, though, because, like, most successful people do say that anyway. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I try. And I've when heard them say that as well. Yeah, exactly. And, no losing. you know, um, for every great thing that happens and every time you're successful, there's been, you know, mm. tens or... Uh, hundreds or thousands of failures prior to that. So exactly. being successful means that you're going to fail along the way, but you fail forward. I don't know who actually originally said that, but fail forward like was something that stuck with, with me. So you fail, you keep moving forward, you learn from it. You fail again, you keep moving forward. Eventually, you will be successful. Definitely. Great yeah. stuff. And that's it. Awesome. That's perfect. Thanks very much, Aim. It was you're great, welcome. great to have you on Optimize Your Body. And uh, if you're listening to this, if you can give me a... Uh, on iTunes, if you can give me like five star rating, please, and a review. Five stars, yeah, five. Um, that would be highly appreciated. Um, he's doing a good job. This is he's doing the podcast all by himself. Yeah, all by myself. Yeah. It's, it's a grind, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, it's yeah. a grind. And I wanted to mention to, to my listeners as well, and um, just so they can listen to a few of your episodes. What's the name of your podcast? Um, I actually haven't recorded for a really long time. Yeah, that's so fine. It is it still on? Is it still on? It's still on. So it's still... called Iron Maiden Radio. Iron, Iron Maiden. Maiden Radio. Iron Maiden Radio. Yeah. Cool. So if you want to listen to any of the um, podcasts. You said right now it's not going right now. <laughs> no, so the girl that I was um, reporting with, she's actually moved to Vegas. She's opened up a gym in Vegas. How selfish is that? Renee Schmidt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're actually thinking about getting back into it, but that was a lot of fun. We talk about the female aspect of competing and that kind of thing in Australia. So I'm sure a lot of my uh, listeners want to uh, tune into that. And what's your Instagram handle? I'll put it on my thing. But The Aussie Fox. The Aussie Fox. Yeah. The underscore, isn't it? The Aussie underscore Fox? No, all, all, all one, one word. word. Yep. The Aussie Fox, right? That's Amy Fox. Check her out. Go follow her. Thanks, and everyone. Once again, thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it.